Well, we want to officially welcome you tonight to a webinar to explain how to put a submission in to the Babies Born Alive Bill 2022. And we're so excited to be hosting you tonight. We welcome you. If it's the very first time, God bless you. And we honor your participation. And for those who are regular guests who pray on Sunday night and Monday night, and Wednesday night at eight o'clock, that is Sydney time, Eastern Daylight time, seven o'clock Queensland time, and it's five o'clock in sunny South Western Australia, isn't it? So we welcome you and we say God bless you. We've got some uh, very wonderful guests on tonight. Hannah Phillips, we've got um, Michelle Oates all the way from the Riverina, and just 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 she could throw a stone into the into the into the Murray, I believe, from her home. And we've also got Dr. Joanna Howe from Professor Dr. Joanna Howe from South Australia, Adelaide. And they'll be sharing with us and giving some encouragement and explaining some things. So yes, tonight's a webinar. It's a little bit, it'll be different to our normal prayer night, but we will hopefully have a chance to pray for this bill in particular. But I'm one of these people that think, always thinks that things will go better with Coke. When <laughs> I say Coke, I mean prayer, okay? So mm -hmm. things will always go better with prayer. I'm not, not suggesting for a moment you should drink a lot of Coca-Cola. There's a lot of acid to that, a lot of sugar in it. You just don't need it, everybody. But seriously, please always make sure you pray whenever you do something. And on that happy note, I'm going to ask Neil in Parks, New South Wales, to lead us in a prayer and commit a way to God. Yeah, I have to agree with what Warwick says. Pray before you do things. It doesn't work out when you don't. <laughs> I proved that this way. Well, I did pray, but Father, we just commit this time together uh, to you in Jesus' name. Um, we look to you, Lord, for our guidance, our um, our help, our strength. Because without you, Lord, we are nothing. Um, and Father, we just submit to you and thank you for your presence amongst these people right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. I might get Kate Keegan in Perth, WA, to also pray. It's nice to have a representation from east and west, north and south. Over to you, Kate. Have to unmute first, though, Kate. God Thanks. can hear you, but we can't. We just thank you, Lord, for being able to get together. The way you're knitting us together as a family, we give you grateful thanks for that, Lord. We pray your blessing on this meeting as this information comes forth. Lord, some of us brains don't grasp everything, but Lord, we just thank you for what you're going to impart and that we be more useful uh, in able to put in these submissions and to get the word out that this is something that needs to be addressed. So Lord, we thank you for this gathering, we thank you that you've been able to bring these people together who are um, well versed in these matters. And we give you grateful thanks, Lord. Just help us as we come, as we pray. We want to pray according to your will and your mandate. So, Lord, we just commit the meeting to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. And Kayleen, Kayleen in Sydney, would you like to pray uh, and commit a way to God tonight in Jesus' name? Thank you, Warwick. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, thank you for bringing us together again tonight and for giving us the opportunity to pray in your name. Father, help us to be able to incorporate the information that we're given tonight so that we can make the best possible submissions in relation to this amazingly important bill. We don't need to convince you of how important it is but we need to convince our politicians, Father, so help us to do that. And bless again, Father, bless each person on this call. And I make this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Kayleen. Thank you so much, uh, Kate. And also thank you so much, uh, Neil. Again, we welcome you for those who just joined us. That The numbers are increasing, literally... Uh, second by second, or up to 136 people. Uh, and that's exciting. We, I think there'll be many more join us before the night is yet over. 
So we're going to hear a number of presentations from different people, but we're also going to hear a song that's been created to, to sing for the babies. And it's been created by one of our wonderful team members, Leone and Ivan Robson. And they're from Newcastle. And uh, they're both incredible musicians, but more than that, they they really love God and they're passionate for these issues. And over to you, Leone and Ivan, in beautiful Newcastle. Thank you, Pastor Warwick. Uh, this song is called For the Babies, and it's written virtually in a prayer form. So I pray it blesses you tonight and speaks to your heart because it is the cry of our hearts tonight.
Thank you so much, Ivan. Thank you so much, Leone. A beautiful song. That's an original song. It was only written a matter of how long ago, Leone? I have to unmute, Leone. Sorry. Sorry, brother. About three or four weeks ago when we were preparing for March for Life. Yeah, so that song was written in the lead up to the prayer. We, we all celebrated, all of the people on this call anyway, um, through the Canberra Declaration, working closely with the wonderful people at, at um, Love Adelaide, called for 21 days of prayer and fasting. And we supported that, the Canberra Declaration supported that. We had the devotions go up on our daily declaration and we pushed that out across the nation and asking people to join. And that song was written up in the lead up for that. And we'll also be sharing another song a bit later uh, after Joanne shares. So why are we here? We're here to have a webinar on how to do a submission. Why should you do a submission into the Babies Born Alive Bill? Because your voice matters. And indeed, we each have to make a stand for the truth. And the people that receive these submissions will need to know that you are a real person. So yes, you need, you will have to ultimately share your name and address. You'll have to share who you are. Just chatting to Matt Canavan's uh, assistant this afternoon. And she said, they're getting thousands of, of, some, of emails coming through. And I said, how, do you, how does it make you feel? She says, we feel very, very encouraged, very, very excited. And, um, but to the very first presentation about how to make a submission, we'll, we'll focus on why we should make a submission and also some wonderful well, facts. This is another one of these talks about yeah, the baby. Yeah, yeah. Is that a About, we'll be um, actually uh, focusing on why things are so bad and why we need to make a stand and some practical bits of advice. And we've got the, Dr. Joanna Howe, who is a professor of law at the Adelaide University, a former New South Wales Rhodes Scholar. And if you understand, it, you have to be extremely high up the ladder to get a, a scholarship as a Rhodes Scholar. And so a huge congratulations to you, Joanna. Over to you and a big thank you, big thank you for all you do. Thank you very much. Um, can everybody hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to assume uh, you Yep. Very soft. You're very soft. Um, you could get close to the microphone, yeah. Get closer? Okay. I'll try to speak up as well. Um, let me know if it's not loud enough. So um, thank you very much for that warm introduction and also to be here again with the Canberra Declaration. It's wonderful to see you all. Um, I was wondering if we could start the slides now. Um, you know, I was going to share them for me. That would be really helpful. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about why you should write a submission for the Babies Born Alive Bill. And the reason is, is because this is a really, this is probably the most critical bill that we've had before our federal parliament in terms of the most voiceless in our society that we've had for many, many years. And every submission will make a difference. Um, I know in my own state of South Australia, the newspaper will often add up the submissions on one side versus the submissions on another side. So it is really important that we have thousands of submissions um, advocating for the passage of this bill to protect babies born alive in our country. Um, Warwick, are you going to share my slides or do you want me to do that at my end? Um, I will, I'll just send them to you, Hugh, but I'm also going to uh, have yeah, a do it, Warwick. I'm not a car host. Okay, point taken. All right. Um, I'm kind of glad you guys are doing it because I'm not so good with this sort of thing. So whenever I'm right. teaching this, my slides mess up. So if you're happy to do it, that would be wonderful. Um, the first slide is just literally a plug um, for my social media and to say that if you would like to know more about this or if you have um, younger people in your family who are on TikTok or Instagram or Facebook um, who may also be interested in social media, please get them to follow me because I, I feel deeply called um, to speak to the general public on this issue. And my goal is to raise up a pro-life generation in Australia. So I'm very much inspired by what's happened overseas, but I also deeply feel that in Australia, we do have the most extreme abortion laws in the world. And so part of my role as a researcher is to use my gifts to be able to explain to people um, about why the direction we're headed in is absolutely the wrong direction for a democracy like Australia. So if we move to the, um, so that's the first slide, but if we move to the second slide, 
I think the headline statistic that we should all be aware of is that on average, every week in Queensland and Victoria, a baby is born alive and left to die after an abortion. And what you will see from the other side is misinformation that this is a myth, that babies aren't born alive and left to die in Australia. So when George Christensen um, brought in his bill prior to this one in the last term of parliament, the, the press had a field day say, you know, there was an article in the, in the Guardian saying that babies born alive is nonsensical. In crikey, babies born alive is a myth. Um, recently, when Matt Canavan, Alex Antic and Ralph Labette brought in their bill, this term of parliament, the Australian, no less than the Australian, had an article saying that this is a, a non-issue, it doesn't really happen in Australia. The journalists in none of these stories had actually bothered to look at the official health department reports and to discover the actual statistics. So we know that on average, this happens once a week in Queensland and Victoria, but when we break this down over the last 10 years from 2010, um, we can see that there's actually been 724 babies who have been born alive and left to die in Queensland and Victoria. And the Queensland Termination of um, Pregnancy Guidelines make it very clear. They say, do not give life-sustaining treatment if a live birth occurs. So we can know as a matter of absolute categorical fact that babies are born alive and left to die in our country. But what does left to die mean? So if we move to the next slide, Unfortunately, because the reports that the health departments give, and I, I want to make it clear that we actually don't have mandatory reporting across Australia. So one of the things I would like you to do in your submission is to just have a sentence in there saying we should absolutely have a mandatory data collection of babies who are born alive after a failed abortion. And you might be asking, how can a failed abortion occur? It's a procedure that's meant to end the life of a human being. How does a baby get born alive? And there's been a number of academic studies and that have shown that a baby is born alive when feticide is not used. And sometimes a baby is just born alive and we can't even explain that. So there was one um, academic study that was a case note of a woman who had gone in for an abortion at 23 weeks. She'd been given abortion pills to induce labour but to kill the baby first. However, when she took the train home after the initial pills, she, she felt the baby move and in her heart, she actually decided, no, I want this baby to live and she changed her mind about wanting to end her baby's life. So she then went back to the hospital a couple of days later when labour was being induced and she said, I want to have this baby and if the baby is born alive, I want him to be resuscitated. Um, and, 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 and she was very adamant and clear about that. And she actually faced pushback from the medical professionals. The baby was born alive. He was resuscitated. He was on oxygen for 53 days. But 10 months later, he was discharged from hospital and he had only minor, very minor motor development um, setbacks, which over the lifetime they expected to be corrected. They tell this story to say that the other thing that we have to all talk about in our submissions is the need for women to have serious and robust crisis counselling in their pregnancies. So if they're considering an abortion, they don't just need that decision to be validated by a pro-abortion counselling service, but they should meet genuine pregnancy counsellors who can give them material and financial and mental health support. Organisations like Genesis Pregnancy in South Australia, for example. So the picture on the slide is of Westmead Hospital. And when we think of a hospital, we think of a place where people go to be restored in their health. And yet we found out in 1998, and we don't get a lot of information about these things because it's not publicly reported, but we did find out that in 1998, a baby was born alive and left to die and actually um, placed in a bin while still breathing at Westmead Hospital. There was a coronial inquest done in chambers. So the report has not been made publicly available, but we know about this case because it was then quoted in the NT coroner's case in respect to Je uh, Jessica Jane. If we move to the next slide, I'll let you know about Jessica Jane. So little Jessica Jane, this coronial inquest into her death is actually mind-blowing. I, I came, I came across it two me? weeks ago um, when I was on the plane to Canberra and I found it just as, I, as the plane was about to take off. Because I, I, as a researcher, I've been searching to, to uncover what happens to the babies who are born alive and left to die in Australia. 
And the numbers, the 724 babies born alive and left to die, we know nothing about who they are. And yet here I found publicly available this report about little Jessica Jane. So she was born, her mother had come to the hospital for an abortion. The doctor had signed off on it. It was for a mental health reason. Um, the mother had said the baby was about 19 weeks. But after labour was induced, it was expected that Jessica Jane would be dead on arrival or that she would live just for a few minutes. But instead, the nurse delivered her and was confronted by this baby that was clearly older than 19 weeks, possibly more between 21 to 23 weeks old. She was crying, she was breathing, her heart was beating, and the nurse held her and did not know what to do. So she called the doctor, the abortionist, and she told him this baby's breathing, she's got good AGPA scores, and the doctor said so and hung up the phone. And at that point, the nurse said, I desperately wanted to do more, but I didn't know what to do. She placed Jessica Jane on a kidney dish, uh, like a petri dish, in an empty room. Um, she put a blanket on top of her, but little Jessica Jane lay there for 80 minutes, so an hour and 20 minutes, breathing, heart beating, whimpering, until she breathed her last. You know, and this story, this this case really blows the lid on what happens with a baby born alive and left to die. So in your submissions, you can reference the case of Jessica Jane, which gives us the information on what happens. And the coroner in this case was absolutely clear in his recommendations. And he said that these babies, when they're born, there should be an automatic assessment about what's happening to them. And then he said, and every time a baby is born alive and left to die, there should be a coronal inquest. And he also said, that there should be mandatory protocols across all hospitals in the Northern Territory. And I've been digging around and I can't see that any of these recommendations have been addressed. So if we move to the next slide, there's a quote on it from the coroner. And in it, he makes it very clear that just because little Jessica Jane was unwanted does not make her life of any less value. And in fact, there should be legal protection for all babies who are born alive in Australia. So we move to the next slide. I'm just going to tell you two more cases that we know of from overseas. So on the left is Tim. He was born in Ireland. Um, so what happened with him was his mother got a diagnosis of Down syndrome and so she said she wanted to end his life because he had Downs. And we know that in Australia this type of absolutely abhorrent disability discrimination is legalised through abortion. Nine out of 10 babies with Down syndrome are aborted and 50% of parents who get a Down's diagnosis are pressured to abort by medical professionals. Tim's mother went in for the abortion, labour was induced and little Tim came out crying and uh, heart beating and breathing and they put him on a metal plate and he actually lay there for over nine hours, nine hours without any kind of care. And he got so cold but he was still alive and crying. And eventually a nurse just took pity on him, picked him up, wrapped him in a blanket, gave him a little bit of sustenance and little Tim lived and was adopted out. But this shows you the brutality of babies being born alive and left to die. In an academic study in the Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology in 2018, they did a study of 241 late-term abortions where labour was induced. 50% of these babies, so over 120, were born alive after the failed abortion. The average time that these babies were alive for on a metal plate was 32 minutes without any medical care, without any pain relief, without any human contact. And one baby in this study survived for 267 minutes, so that's over four hours without any kind of medical care. But what kind of society allows a baby to be born and deprives her of her basic human rights? So that's what we're fighting for. On the right is Melissa Oden. She was born alive in a hospital in the US and um, she was placed in medical waste, which is what so often happens. But a nurse passed by and could hear little Melissa crying. She looked at the medical waste bin. She picked up Melissa, realised she was alive, and that, that nurse saved her life. And Melissa today is a very outspoken advocate for the rights of babies who were born after a failed abortion. If we move to the next slide. 
So what do we need to do in our submission? Sometimes it can be really daunting to think about how to write the submission, and I know there's going to be a lot on this, so I won't labour it. But what I would like to say is really to encourage you that every single person on this call needs to make a submission. And if you've got two people listening, like a husband and wife, put in separate submissions because every submission makes a difference. Speak about how this makes you feel as an Australian. I and mean, we are in a country that is based on democracy. It's founded on the notion that every single person, every Australian is of equal value and has dignity. And so how can we have a law in this country or, or a system of laws across our states and territories which deny equal treatment to babies who are born alive after a failed abortion? All we're asking for through Matt Canavan's bill is that there be equal treatment given to all babies who are born alive in Australia, that every single baby has a right to medical care and to be respected and valued under the law. So how does it make you feel that in Australia we don't have this at the moment? You know, I told the story of Jessica Jane on TikTok and it's gone to over 130,000 people. So I've watched that video and I keep getting the comments again and again. Oh, but this was in 2000. The situation has changed now. Our abortion protocols are even clearer. And so then I had to do another video which clarified and said, look, the reason I'm talking about Jessica Jane is because nothing has changed. We still leave babies born alive and we leave them to die in Australia after a failed abortion. And in fact, our abortion protocols are clear. They actually say, do not give life-saving treatment to these babies. So how does that make you feel? And then secondly, what do you want the government to do? And so what I'll be writing in my submission is that I want the government to pass this bill and I want a system of mandatory national protection for all babies born alive in Australia. We want mandatory data collection of all these babies. We want to know who they are, why they were aborted. We don't need to know their mother's name so we can guarantee anonymity. We don't need to worry about the privacy. We don't need to worry about that. We can respect the privacy of the mother, but we want to know who these babies are, why they were aborted, how long they lived for. And ultimately, if they do die, we, we want a coronavirus inquest into their death. So I'll leave that there, but thank you very much, everybody. Please do follow me on social media. You can flick to the last slide so we can just do that plug. Um, so it's Dr. Joanna Howe official on Facebook and Dr. Joanna Howe on Instagram and TikTok. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, uh, Dr. Joanna. We really appreciate you. We honour you and thank God for you. And, uh, you know, let's let's. Uh, who would like to pray for Dr. Joanna uh, and just say a blessing upon her? She's making a stand. It's costing her something. Her husband's been attacked. They've tried to cancel her and attack her left, right, and centre. Um, who would like to say a prayer? Me. Okay, off you go, Molly. But can you make it quick because we do have to get through a fair bit of stuff. God can hear a long prayer and he can hear a short prayer. Okay, it's all right. Father, we want to thank you for Dr. Joanna for raising her for such a time as this. Father, even as this is the time of Purim, we thank you that an, a decree was made and written by Esther to preserve the annihilation of her people. Father, as we, as uh, Dr. Joanna, you have raised her for such a time as this, to prepare this nation and for your people to stand for such a time as this, for the, for the cause of the annihilation of the babies that are born alive. So Father, we come as the body of Christ and we thank you for this mighty woman of God. Lord, we thank you as she enables us, we pray a blessing over her and that the work of her hands, according to Psalm 90, 17, will be established that the beauty of Christ may be seen. So we thank you and we pray, Father, that in this hour, Lord, let the scepter of favor come. And Father, let this death decree be destroyed so that life that Jesus came to give will come forth. And Father, establish her father and her family that generations may call her blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm going to ask Morel Curtis to say a prayer too. Morel, thank you so much as you pray. A blessing upon uh, you. Actually, Morel, by the way, Joanna is a, a lawyer as, as you you are and uh, were, and Morel was uh, you know working right up till fairly relatively recently in the in the courtroom system. So it's only appropriate, Morel, if you'd like to say a prayer, a blessing for Dr. Joanna Howe as a professor of law. Thank you, Dr. Joanna. Thank you, Dr. Joanna. Thank you, Dr. Joanna. Thank you, Dr. Joanna. Thank you, Dr.
and a woman who's got courage to stand. Lord, I just give you praise and thanks, Lord, that your throne is a throne of justice and righteousness. I thank you, Lord, that you raise up people like Dr. Joanna Howe to speak your heart of justice. And I just thank you that you will continue to bless and keep her and her family. And may her voice be a voice that penetrates the darkness of this world regarding the unborn and many issues. So we just exalt your holy name. We thank you for Dr. Joanna and all the people who stand for your heart of justice, Lord. We just thank you that the return of Jesus will mean that our society will no longer be so unjust as it is now. Thank you. Amen, Lord Jesus. Amen. Now, I'd like to introduce you to uh, three wonderful women. I'm just going to ask Michelle Oates to say hello. Where are you, Michelle? Hello. Thanks so much for having us, Warwick. Oh, it's a great honour, Michelle, and you already are a co-host. And uh, indeed, we've got uh, Jodie Pickard, all the way from Adelaide. Love Adelaide. You want to say hello, Jodie? We thank God for you, by the way. We appreciate you. <laughs> thank you, Warwick. Um, you're not going to hear from me. You're going to hear from the talent behind Love Adelaide, Hannah, tonight. So, uh, yeah, hopefully uh, you can all take this in and uh, be able to use this information really easily. God bless you, too. And, and then to Hannah Phillips who's an amazing woman who's got a deep, deep passion, extremely creative, extremely uh, a lot of uh, understanding about this issue and how to tackle these issues. And so we're very blessed. Um, who's going to speak first, Hannah or oh, it's Michelle? Me. It's me. Michelle's going to um, actually do my slides for me. So we've taken the pressure off. Um, so um, Michelle will bring everything around and she'll move us around the internet. So can everyone hear me okay? We can, we can, we can. Beautiful. All right, let's get, let's get into this. Um, thank you so much, uh, Warwick, for the opportunity to speak here tonight. Um, and thank you to Dr Joanna Howe. Um, that's just an amazing opener to, to what it means to write a submission and how important this is. Um, the heart behind what we've been working on behind the scenes with Dr Joanna Howe, uh, with Canberra Declaration and, and Love Adelaide and other players and researchers is that you have the best information and resources possible for you to make that submission. And there was a prayer as we opened tonight, and it was all about um, that we would have the best resources and that we'd be able to write the best submissions. So that's our heart, um, and I hope that comes across this evening. So I just wanted to, first of all, um, acknowledge the amazing work um, uh, of Canberra Declaration and putting together the um, e-campaign link. This is an amazing thing to have. Um, it allows you pop your address in, um, and I think we'll have Michelle share her screen in just a second, and we'll bring it up so you can actually start seeing it. Um, we've got her lovely desktop, but here it comes. Um, and, we'll, and we'll look at this amazing um, submission page. If we go down on the email, this is one of your emails. There's been a couple that have come out. There's that big green button. Um, if you click on that, now you're welcome to click on that and follow along with us this evening, or you may like to take notes. Um, and we hope after tonight that you would have an outline um, of something that you could put forward as a submission. Um, we want to make this process as easy as possible. Okay, so we're going to start by putting in some details. Um, we've come up with a fictitious person. Um, she's a grandmother. She's got three grown children. Um, she's got five grandchildren. Her name's Mary Smith. She's a stay-at-home mum. She lives at 1 Smith Street in Coburg. Um, in the state of Victoria. Um, this means that Senator Ralph Bavay, who's one of the co-signers of the bill, he'll be getting her uh, submission. Um, and then we're going to click um, onto uh, the now click here to write your emails. And then this will allow you to go in. M Michelle's not gonna save that one down, um, but this is the Canberra Declaration space where you actually uh, get to write your email. Your recipients are listed there for you. Um, and that's all of your um, amazing senators there. So you can see Ralph the Bay is there and Michelle's actually waving her mouse around there. So you can see how awesome this software is. This is going to everyone. You don't have to do this multiple times. You just do it once and it's done. And they all have a copy of your submission. 
And this is really important. So we're going to put in the human rights, we have to put a subject in. So in the subject bar, we're going to put in the human rights, children's born alive bill 2022, um, protection bill, I should say, 2022. You'll notice in the bottom um, of the body there is Mary Smith's um, address and details. Just pop that back up to the top of the page and like you would with any letter, um, and right underneath it there. And so then we will, we now need some information. So I think, you know, it's really important that we talk about um, when you get to this point, sometimes you've got all these great ideas flying around in your head, like I do, and then you have to write them and you've got no idea what to say first. Um, so we're going to take you through some ideas of what you can say and a few points to make the submission process as easy as possible. And so feelings are a big part of our culture today. Our society often talks about how I feel. So it's really important to put those feelings forward. And in this case, we need to put forward our feelings about what's actually happened um, in, in Mary's life and how she feels. But, you know, before we get to putting in our submission for Mary, I thought we'd just take a quick look at some of the things that you can actually use. So I wanted to, to mention that we're going to bring up some, maybe stir up some ideas for you of how what you could put in your submission. Dr Joanna Howe has provided some amazing resources there with that case coming out of Westmead Hospital and also the information that she put forward um, on that beautiful baby, Jessica Jane and her story. So we're gonna just show you that Dr. Joanna Howe has a fact sheet. I, I believe it'll be made um, shareable by Warwick, um, but I do know that we- will actually... interrupt you for a second, Hannah. We do actually have it up on our website. Beautiful. I didn't find it there, Warwick. So thank you yeah, for- It's for only just gone up today. And yeah. uh, I'll put a link in the chat. It's under resources, under life, and it's babies born alive, but I'll put it under the chat, okay? Excellent, thanks for it, but I'm glad you clarified that. So this is Dr. Joanna Howe's fact sheet. And as you can see there, there's lots of information that she has for you to be able to put up the best submission possible. Um, and I just wanna draw your attention to that little Jessica Jane, it's right there for you to, to take from if you'd like to use that um, in your submission. The other thing I wanted to point out, there's so many resources and we're so grateful that so many of the pro-life groups are coming together and that we are working together as a one team. So I want to point out the work that Cody Mitchell did on Canberra Declaration late last year um, with this beautiful set of statistics that he's placed up. Um, and you can see here that he even has the links that go off on the page. So that's really impressive. What I find really interesting about all these reports that he's put together is we've taken that data from what the work that Cody has done and people like Cody has gone in and done multiple hours of research. And we've worked out that number that Dr. Joanna Howe mentioned as well, which is um, one that uh, is pretty frightening. On average, more than one baby is born alive and left to die in Victorian Queensland every seven days during an abortion. They are horrible statistics to think that this last week a baby died. And so that might be something that you might want to add into your submission. Um, it is a, it's a startling stat and it's been one that I've been repeating to people this last week. I also wanted to uh, point out there that we only have the Victorian and Queensland data because reporting is sometimes incomplete. So we aren't a, we're not able to actually take data from um, other places. So, um, and sometimes they're not released to the public, those reports. So what Dr. Joanna Howe is saying about having that mandatory reporting arm in your submission is really, really vital and something that I think is really worthwhile. I want to point out that um, there was something mentioned in Jessica Jane's story about that little baby. Um, they mentioned the midwife. This is another story. This is Mary. Um, it's a pseudonym. Um, um, we like to keep people's confidentiality, obviously. But it's an Australian midwife, um, and this happened about 16, 17 years ago, I believe. But this is a story. When I began photographing the baby, the flash stimulated this little boy to breathe. I was horrified. How could he have possibly survived the termination? We didn't know what to do. There was no policy for this situation. I picked up this perfectly formed baby, wrapped him in a blanket and put him under the heater in the storeroom. It was so distressing. I think it's important 
that we can even acknowledge the midwife and the doctors and the medical staff's distress have been faced with these situations. And I'd like to point out to you that if you want to read the full story or even watch the video about Mary's testimony, you can there at our stories tab, and that will give you that information. Um, and there's a video link right there for you. So um, I, I think there's, there's another piece of information that I have noticed um, on Warwick's uh, email that he sent out. And it's something that Jo also mentioned when she spoke tonight. Um, and it's those Queensland termination and pregnancy guidelines. In 2017, when they brought these laws in, um, it was one of the saddest days as we saw them, you know, paint the city pink with lights in Queensland. And it was horrifying to see that these laws were so extreme. And it, it's like right now we have an opportunity as a country to address it and actually address the extreme nature of these, law, these laws. I'll just read these two for you from um, that Canberra Deck email that was sent out. The Queensland Termination of Pregnancy Guidelines state, if live birth occurs, do not give life-sustaining treatment. Document date and time end of life occurs. Babies who survive abortion in Queensland and Victoria have no legal rights. Most other states and territories are similar. It actually says in that legislation that you're to hold the baby gently in Queensland. Um, and then you're to keep it warm, and then you are to offer no life no life sustaining treatments. There's no tubes. There's nothing. There's no fluids. There's nothing. Um, and anyone who um, has seen palliative care even would say that's terrible to see that nothing's been offered to protect that baby. And there's no pain assessment that is also mandated either. Uh, so there's nothing. There's no even. Um, there's no assessment required for any reason whatsoever. So it's very sad that they're just left to die in that state. So where do we go from here? Well, now we need to sort of work out how we actually draft up an email. So we have a we have a, a bit like what Jo put up before. She talked about what you feel and tell the government what you want them to do. So what we have is a, we have a three, we've got a three point approach. It's very similar to what Jo has said. We're all on the same page on this one here. It's what you feel, it's what you've lived, and it's what you know. So feelings, like I said before, are really important to put forward. And so if we talk about Mary, the lady I mentioned before, Mary Smith, who we've made up, she's just a made up character, but she's a grandmother. She's, she could be like anyone in this room who's, who's got grandchildren, three adult children, five grandchildren, and she has um, five, five grandchildren, and one of those grandchildren um, was a 23-week-old preemie baby named Ben. So Mary's story. If we go back into the email, which is that e-campaign email, we're going to pop in the body, we've written something for you, and then we're going to go through it and we're going to break it down so you can see how easy it is to put this information together. So first of all, Mary thanks the committee for the opportunity to make a submission, and then she lets them know who she is. So she says, my name is Mary Smith. I am a mother of three and a grandmother of five, and I've been a housewife my whole life. Now, if you have a degree or you have qualifications or you've worked in a certain field, please put that information in. Um, all information is valid. It doesn't matter. We've just chosen this as a case study for this evening. I'm very upset, so here's her feelings. I'm very upset and disturbed to learn that babies are being born alive from failed abortion and left to die. One baby every seven days is left to die. So she's remembered that piece of data and popped that in. Um, this is too many. She then goes on to talk about what she's lived. And this is her lived experience with her grandson, Ben. My grandson was born preemie at 26 weeks, or we've actually changed it 23 weeks, um, uh, um, because 23 week outcomes are really interesting. So 50% chance of survival and a 40% chance of living without any life impacting disabilities. So we just thought we'd put that little piece of data in there. Um, I helped my daughter and son-in-law fight for his life. I will never forget holding him for the first time. He was so tiny, but they helped him. And I just can't fathom anyone failing to care for such a precious little one, knowing that they, that, that they are born alive at this stage and can survive as my grandson did. Hannah, can I interrupt yeah. for a second? Um, <clears throat> we've got a number of very brave women who've actually shared on our prayer call how 
uh, 30, 40, 50 years ago, they had an abortion. And now as they've learnt and they've come to Christ and they understand because they were either pressured into it by family or a boyfriend or a, a father or whatever it was, um, what do you think? I think those stories are very valid. What do you think, Hannah? Oh, absolutely. Testimony is amazing. What does it say in the Word of God? It says you'll know them by their testimony. Um, so bringing out your testimony is an amazing opportunity. Um, and something that we, while you mentioned that, Warwick, we would love people to tell their story because we would like to get this into the senators. Um, so in your submissions, please tell your story. But if you have a story about seeing a baby born alive from failed termination or you know someone that does, please share this because this information is vital for those people in that committee to be able to make a decision. So it's very easy to share your story and we'll provide those links um, for everyone to get that information. Um, but absolutely, Warwick, essential to share any testimony you have um, in the submission. Um, it's very powerful. And like we said, it's those feelings that come up um, and it's the real story of what's happening in Australian society. So we'll go back to our submission. Um, I've heard Australian midwives, a midwife story, which is that one we just mentioned to you before. Um, that, was, that was a very, very sad story where she was placed in the position to care for a baby born alive from a failed abortion without support from the other medical staff. And that sort of is reminiscent in a sense of the situation with Jessica Jane, where the midwife or the nurse was placed in a position where she didn't know what to do and the doctor wouldn't help. Um, you could also talk about Jessica Jane's coroner case. She says here, I've heard about Jessica Jane's coroner case of being born alive, crying and dying one hour and 20 minutes later without medical care. This is not the standard care I wish to see in Australia for our most vulnerable. It's unfathomable that babies born alive from failed termination do not have the legal rights. Another little piece of information she's garnered there from some of those reports. You don't need to necessarily put in the data. You can just put things into your own words from the data you're gathering. Please ensure there is mandatory national care, as Dr Joanna Howard just said before, and reporting across all of Australia. We need to pass this law to protect babies. Sincerely, Mary Smith. We're not going to actually click send emails on this one here. We're just going to let, let this one go away because it's actually a fictitious person um, that we have put together here as a case study so that people could see how to write um, a, a, a proper submission. Now, this submission is actually quite long. You could write two or three sentences. Um, it doesn't have to be like this, but we just want to give you the opportunity to see what someone could put together quite quickly. So that's how to, um, to, to write a submission. So um, right now we can just see on the screen that um, Michelle is just typing out here a submission that you could put forward if you don't have, you don't feel like you have the time or you're not sure how to put the words together. This too is a submission. Um, and as Joe said, um, it's really important that if there are two people on this call or you have multiple family members in your home, that you please encourage everyone to write a submission. We want the submissions coming out everywhere. We want them to have to go, just stop, there's just too many. Um, I understand that one of the senators who is involved uh, is planning uh, on having them all printed so he can have stacks of paper to show just how many submissions we received. Um, so I'm believing that lots of submissions will continue to come in. Um, I think that would be really amazing if that is possible, that that does happen. I just wanted to point out before we go that if you are, obviously we picked up some data that lots of people now are becoming aware of um, and it's very public data. If you're looking for something a little bit different that you would like to put forward, please check out Joanna House back sheet. Um, she's got lots of other information there. Look at Canberra Declaration's uh, email they've sent out to you um, and have a look at Cody Mitchell's stats. The other thing that um, Love Adelaide and the team has put together for all pro-life groups to use um, are some infographics. Um, and these infographics make it very easy for you to see 
those little pieces of data nice and quickly uh, and to be able to grab from those. And all of those are free for anyone to use um, and to put up on social media if you're, so, if you're a bit social media savvy um, and to put that information out as publicly as possible um, and share it everywhere. So you can see those little infographics there, there to give you um, some prompts if you are looking for data as well. And that is how you share a submission, Warwick. I think, I think we've covered it. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, we, just with that, that uh, those little infographics, they're ideal for Instagram, uh, Facebook, um, possibly even TikTok if you want to get a bit bit adventurous, and other forms of social media. Correct? Absolutely. And you can even just print off those, and they can be a guide to help you write your submission. They're just. They're just really handy when you're writing a submission, you're thinking, what was that stat I'm looking for? And then it's, if, it's a, if it's a graphic, it can be really easy just to find that little picture. Um, I, I quite find pictures a bit easier to, to work through. That way I can find the graphic or the data I'm looking for quickly. Um, but they're a way of communicating and they might be a way of communicating to other younger people in um, your sphere of influence about what is happening um, in Australia, especially with this bill. Now, Hannah, uh, anybody can make a submission, correct? Absolutely. This is essential that everybody makes a submission to this one here. We've even been talking about younger people. Um, like remember, 16, 17-year-olds, make a submission. Um, they should be. They're doing research project in school on this sort of issue, um, on abortion. I've got many young people who contact me and let me know they're doing research project. So they should be making submissions as well. They should be letting their government know they're going to be voting in the next election. So they should be letting their government know exactly how they feel about it as well. Uh, there was a couple of questions that came up in the chat, if I can just check. Um, you know, yeah. Oh, yes. Do we need to provide references for the information we are stating? That's from Annette. What's your comment on that? Do we need to provide references? No, it's not necessary to provide references. You definitely can provide references. I'm not sure if we're still sharing, Michelle, um, or if it's possible to still share um, the screen. And I can just show people that um, Love Adelaide has got some references um, that may be helpful for people. Michelle's just going to have to quickly run back through the, um, uh, the system here, but she can just show you that we have a whole list of references if you would like to. It is not essential, and that's why we showed you um, that you didn't need to share. So it's under statistics, um, and we'll just click on that link there, and you can see there is a whole list of references that you are welcome to use if you would like to do so. Um, but it's definitely not essential to write a submission to put in references. And the key thing again, uh, Hannah, is that um, that basically it has to be your own words. Can you explain why it's so important for each submission to be original and different to the next submission? Oh, this is the key thing, and this is what makes it really hard to when we put out for submissions. If people put in a templated letter or copy something that someone else has put out and don't change it, it just gets counted as one submission. Um, and we don't want that. We want every single one to be counted separately. So you do need to write something on the page. And like Michelle indicated just before, you can just pop on the page just that one very simple sentence. It's still your submission. It's still different from the others. I would recommend popping in a couple of sentences um, that you definitely can um, definitely can write something. There's so much information. Um, the groups here, Canberra Declaration, uh, Dr. Joanna Howe, Love Adelaide, um, and the research team behind all this data have worked extremely hard to try and make this as easy as possible for everyone. Michelle, can we go back to Hannah, Hannah um, visuals, her own um, I was just going to say, Warwick, I could show people how to put the referencing on if they wanted to. I wouldn't worry about I think I'd, I would leave it there. I think it's very important, everybody, to understand you don't have to. It's very important what Hannah just said. You don't have to. This is 95%. Well, actually, so I'd say 98% of it is you want to, and you comment about this, uh, Hannah. It's about having a name with a an address with a with a phone number with your, people know who you are you've got an email it's in your state it's in your it's somewhere in australia 
and this is how you feel and this is what you think. It could be one sentence, it could be one paragraph, it could be one page, and yes, it can be more, but it's just about the numbers of submissions, isn't it, Hannah? Can you explain that? Yeah, numbers of submissions is the key here. Um, they want in quantity. This is um, the advisors to um, the, the senators are talking about quantity. They're wanting quantity of submissions here um, so that they can really show the case for this. Look, this is really important for this to move forward. Um, and I think it's essential that um, you just you just pop in what you feel, um, what you've lived and what you know. You don't have to make it complex. Um, it's all about, it's a feelings-based world, so just pop those things in. Um, and even if you don't refer to the data, you don't need to, but if you want to, you can. Um, but it's not essential and it's not necessary. And we don't want the dropout rate to, you know, with, if, if people are looking for data and they're feeling like they've got to make this amazing submission, you might not submit it because you're so worried it has to be good. Um, when what we presented just before um, is a, an excellent submission, um, and would be looked at highly. Yeah, and when do submissions close? And, uh, you know, any, a comment about that? So, yeah, submissions close on the 10th of March, so we've only got really a week to go here. Um, but post submissions closing, uh, Warwick, I'm not sure, I'm guessing you're keeping this open, your, your e-campaign open, post that for people to still write letters to their senators. I think we've got to encourage people to try to get a close of business on Friday, so five o'clock Friday. Absolutely. I think it, please please get submissions in close of business Friday. Um, post post that though. Um, it, it's important that you um, write letters to uh, letters to your senators um, if you haven't done this process. But I'd just say get on to this process. It's so easy. Warwick has put together a fantastic system um, there that can actually carry the information so easily. You just hit send. It's all done then, you've done it once. 100%. So just to clarify something someone else is asking, uh, Hannah, um, what actually we've created, and we're very thankful to other people who are smarter than us to put it together, and we've worked closely with uh, Love Adelaide, a, a bit of a partnership happening here between Canberra Declaration Love Adelaide, and we've borne the costs, and we're talking about thousands and thousands of dollars to put this together. What you've got now is a facility that actually just sends that your submission to the, the secretary of the um, committee into the maybe born alive bill. Then it will be presented to all the senators and will be handed out. Right, that's number one. But it also sends that same that same submission directly to your local federal member. As long as you put your address in, you have to put your address and not a post office box, but an address that's accurate, that's clear with a postcode, make sure you, you can pick the state in that drop down menu. And when you press send, it goes to the committee, it goes to your, to your local member and it goes to 12 senators in your state. If you're in the ACT, it goes to two senators. If you're in the Northern Territory, it goes to two senators. But in all the states, each state has 12 senators. That's 12 plus, that's 12, okay? And so it, we've made it so easy for you to send your submission to uh, speak up to the babies. Any last comments? Michelle, we haven't spoken, Michelle. Come on, say something. You're wonderful behind the scenes. <laughs> Oh, I just thank you so much. And to everyone who's here willing to make a submission, um, we'll be praying for you and just appreciate your time listening. It's very heavy going. Sometimes hearing this, you can walk away thinking, is that really happening? Um, so just encourage you to refer back to the emails from Canberra Declaration and um, just try and tap into those emotions and tell them how you feel about this. Um, it'll be fantastic to see the outcome. And we'll just mention, um, as Senator Canavan said, last time the bill may not pass the first time. And if that happens, don't be discouraged because we will just keep going until it gets passed. In South Australia, I think it took 17 attempts for them to pass the euthanasia bill, which is a bad bill. We're here to pass a good bill, but it may take a couple of attempts and that's okay. But as we keep building momentum every time, we will get there as we partner together. So thank you. Michelle, you want to explain to people that every time that we actually get a chance to have a bill and we talk about it, get into the media, do submissions, what happens to the other side? Well, the other side becomes very busy. 
The more submissions you put in, the busier it keeps them. And it also means that they don't have time to draft more um, dodgy bills. <laughs> um, it also sort of weakens their argument too. The more that people build momentum and say, look, this is unethical. How can we be doing this? And your story has power to change the hearts of the people reading your story as well. So don't underestimate the power of that and be praying for the people reading all the stories because that can change things. You never know what God will do. Thank you so much, Michelle. And uh, Hannah, just last comment from yourself. Uh, it's so important to get submissions in. So you would be encouraging people here to go to their friends, their neighbours, their people at their church and sit down with them and actually help them write their submissions, correct? Absolutely. If you have that, if you have time right now and you can do that, please encourage people, text everyone you know, send them the link, send them everything that you've been given um, through Canberra Declaration. Uh, that form is an amazing tool. So it makes it so easy to get those submissions done. I just texted today, I think 28 people in one group text and just said, you need to, you need to do this. It, was, it wasn't even can you, it was you need to. <laughs> so encourage everyone you know. The more submissions, that's exactly what we need. So go to your friends, your neighbours, contact your church, see if they can put it up in, the, in, the, in a text message or put it on a prayer chain. Or it, Yeah, this is so essential that we, we get this information in now. Thank you so much. So we're going to pray. We are going to... Um, Commit ourselves to pray, and we've only really got four days, okay? So we, we've got to get as, as many people as we possibly can. And remember, it only actually has, the submission only has to be even one sentence submission with a name and address and your details. It's much more important, and I, you know, if you can add your phone number, I'd certainly suggest you do. But ultimately, it's your name and address. They can actually search the roles and find out if you're real. So they, in many cases, they will, by the way. The committee will do that because just out of due process, so yes, it has to be a real address with a real person who lives in that house, on that street, in that suburb, in that state. And trust me, you will be counted. Numbers matter. It's all about votes. And we actually have to do a, get a lot of submissions in which will scare the other bill that's coming through to make uh, abortion a national issue. A national issue. They want to legislate for abortion just like they did in America with Roe versus Wade. And, and lock it in at a national level, and that way the states can sit under that horrible bill. So we must fight against that, and the best way to fight against it, the best form of defence is attack. So right now, this is, this is an opportunity for an attack. This is an opportunity for us to speak out the little ones, and I'm going to play a video. We'll come back. There might be a couple of questions that we'd still like to answer, and we are going to play this very, very important video, and I think you'll enjoy it. It's a very beautiful video. Half 
abandoned They've got a right to choose life They don't want to lose I've got to speak up, won't you? Many come and many go Conceive but not deliver The toll is astronomical Oh, how can we be indifferent? Little hands, little feet Tears for him Forsake you now, yet he'll never forsake you. Who will speak up for the little ones, helpless and half abandoned? They've got a right to choose life they don't want to lose. I've got to speak up, won't you? It's uh, very humbling to be with you all. Uh, we have to finish very, very shortly. I've got a funny feeling we've covered everything. Uh, last comments from yourself, Hannah, Jody, Michelle. You might have noticed any uh, people's um, chats, anything that we might have missed. I've got a feeling we've covered 98% of it. That's my feeling. Jody, you speak first. I've been answering a lot of questions as it comes through. Uh, if, yeah, if there's anything else that we've missed, you can always email uh, Warwick, you can email Love Adelaide. Uh, we'll continue to guide you as best we can. But um, yeah, just thank you everyone for coming on. Uh, I just, yeah, we can't thank you enough, but please make sure you uh, take this as far and as wide as you can. Love Adelaide is going to be actually going through our database uh, once we get past submission stage and we're going to be uh, calling um, our supporters and helping to guide them even over the phone to do these submissions. Well, it won't be a submission then, it'll just be a letter to the senators. So, uh, you know, we want them to see something they've never seen before uh, at a federal level. We've done this at a state level. Uh, but they've never seen it um, on a state, on a federal level. So uh, if you can join us in that, that would be amazing. Yeah, just a, one thing that's uh, I'll get handed to sort of comment about this is that this is actually stage one of the campaign, Hannah, isn't it? This is stage one. So stage one is get our submissions in, your in-laws, your outlaws, your enemies, your friends, your whoever they might be, 
um, mum and dad, the kids, anybody but anybody. It's all about numbers. It's about getting submission in and you've got that facility to use. There'll be an email coming out tomorrow morning from, tomorrow morning from the camera declaration and uh, we'll have the HTTPS link, which is that little bit more secure. The link right now, by the way, is quite secure as it is. There's no problem. I've you know, just talked to our, our provider today um, and we didn't put the proper HTTPS link. We put a HTTP link and um, that was actually our provider's mistake. But nonetheless, that uh, submission thing works, number one. But tomorrow morning, there'll be an email coming out with this recording. And that song is uh, found on the Canberra Declaration. That song is by Phil Kiggy. We actually created that only a little uh, short while ago, relatively. We put it together uh, to launch the 21 Days of Prayer and Fasting for Life. And, uh, you know, there's a whole bunch of resources. Again, we'll be, we'll be doing two more emails uh, before Friday because this is so, so important. Stage two and stage three. Hannah, tell us about stage two and stage three. Stage two is getting letters to um, to senators. So post post this happening, if people hadn't done a submission, we'll be trying to pick up anyone who missed out or didn't get one in on time. And we'll be doing those letters out to um, our senators. And then uh, at that same time, we'll be making sure we get people in their offices. Nothing better than taking seven or eight people with you to an office. Um, as I understand, some of our team are putting together T-shirts. Um, so there'll be young people, I believe, walking in wearing T-shirts that say every seven days and a little baby's hand on it. So um, they're putting together some amazing things. Um, and I understand there's some other things coming uh, down the pipeline, but they're going to continue to keep lobbying. We're just not going to stop until babies uh, born alive feel it passes. This is, this is essential that it does. And as Michelle mentioned, you know, if this doesn't this time, uh, then we keep going. We, we, we never stop in, until we get this through. This is amazing. We've come so far here in Australia. We got this all the way to this process. This is amazing that we're this far. So let's use it um, and uh, and let's get those submissions in as fast as possible. Thank you so much. You mute yourself. Thank you so much. If, if, please keep yourself muted because it's, we just want to make sure I guess we're just about to finish. And we're going to go to uh, Dr. Joanna Howe. But before we do that, we're going to go, Michelle, anything you'd like to finish as we finish tonight? Anything you'd like to say? Um, yeah, I can just answer a question that was asked in, in the uh, comments there. People asked about, did we have any data or information on the selling of babies' body parts, as we may have heard from the US? Um, we don't have any of that information. There's actually a lot that we do not have um, on what's actually happening. So I guess that would be a prayer point. Even the Jessica Jane's corona case, that came about through people sharing information and teamwork. So if you continue to pray that the pro-life leaders will continue in unity and working together as a team and that God might bring to light those things that they can be um, exposed, um, that would be fantastic. And we'd, I'm just so encouraged by all of you, uh, the whole team here at Campbell De Declaration and your prayers. And thank you. Thank you so much. This this whole thing is going to be one in prayer. That's where it's at. Um, it's it's faith and it's action, but it all starts in the prayer room. So thank you so much. And thank you, Warwick. Thank you so much, Michelle. On behalf of uh, Kim, I want to say thank you too to you guys. But uh, Joanna, you are amazing. We just really want to say a huge thank you to you because you're making a stand and it's not without cost. So God bless you. Anything you want to tell us? Um, thanks, Warwick. I just wanted to say thank you to everybody and thank you to the two ladies who prayed um, that blessing over me. That was really, that meant a lot. Um, and just to ask for your continuing prayers, um, I feel like there's there's an exciting opportunity for me um, potentially coming up to break open this issue even more, but I need, um, if you could just Pray for that because that's all I can say at this point but I, I feel like there might be some doors opening and so just really ask the community to, to get behind that um, in prayer and thank you everybody for your time today. Amen. Thank you so much it's very beautiful of you and um, I'm going to ask um, Leone who wrote that beautiful song to close off with the prayer um, so yeah, look, this is this is the sort of the beginning of a campaign because this 
when, when do they actually report, uh, Hannah or Michelle? Uh, I think they're reporting in June. Is that right? I believe it's the 1st of July, I think, is yeah. when it's due. Yeah. So, so, in other words, this is actually alive for the next five months from a point of view of, as an issue. So if you'd like to get, you know, you can even write to your local newspaper, write, article, write letters to the newspaper. We're happy to take your articles and put them on the daily declaration if you want to write your stories about life or babies. We want, we want to get stories out there. And so the daily declaration will print stories that you've got about children, about babies uh, and, and, and the tragedies, the, the good, the bad, whatever's happened, because we need to tell people stories. Stories are very, very powerful. Uh, is Joelle with us? Um, can you see if Joelle Cullen is with us, Hugh? She was earlier. Yeah. God bless you, Joelle. And um, would you like to um, finish off by praying, particularly uh, we've already prayed for our sister Joanna, but uh, for Michelle and, and Hannah and, and uh, Jody and the rest of the team and all the life groups across Australia and just really bless them as they make a stand and all those people putting submissions in. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, Lord God, we just lift up yeah, Michelle and, and Hannah and Jody and Joanna and all these ones who are taking a stand for you, God, um, in just a really unpopular opinion at the moment. Um, Holy Spirit, would you move through the life campaigns? Would would your power come? Would your would your presence come to your people who are standing for life, God, who are standing for truth and for justice for these little lives? And God, you have big things planned for these little ones, for these little babies. The enemy wants to try and destroy. And in Jesus' name, we just pray that the tides would turn. Lord, I pray for each one, even as they write their submissions, that they would be read, that their voices would be heard. And Lord, that the response would be great to um, yeah, to these campaigns, Lord, to this, um, that there would just be a pushback against the enemy, against these bills that are, uh, um, yeah, just seeking to take these little ones' lives. And, yeah, we just stand in the gap for them and say, in Jesus' name, let them live, let the babies live, let the children of the next generation live. And God raise up a standard against just the evil that's going on. I pray it would be exposed, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Joelle. Well, God bless you. Uh, again, I want to say thank you. We're finishing right now. Uh, we'll stop for another five minutes just for a little bit of a uh, chit chat afterwards. But a thank you for coming. God bless you all. Make sure you tell your friends, get those submissions in, do what you can, and God's blessings to you. Thank you so much. Does anyone want to thank uh, Hannah, Joanna, Jody, Michelle? And appreciate these dear dear people who have put uh, it's a massive amount of work by the way has gone on behind the scenes here to get all these facts and figures together to get these infographics to get to even be here tonight and present michelle has been uh basically running around getting people's uh, names and addresses and emails and contacts uh right now uh she's co contacted all the different life groups across australia all the groups that are working together and she's actually communicating this information right across the nation. So this is very, I, I can honestly say I've never seen anything like this as far as the whole sort of from a point of view of a, of a concerted campaign uh, where everyone's really working together. Um, you know, we did work together back in 2003, 2002, around those times when those bills came through the RU486. And there was a lot of great effort, but certainly since then, I have not seen this sort of effort uh, go into a life bill. And mind you, we haven't had this opportunity either for all these many, many years, at least two decades. So this is why this is so important. I must confess, I did not expect to see this bill get up. I was quite surprised, pleasantly surprised, I might add, but nonetheless surprised when this bill, they got it through and they got it to a committee stage. Just to get it to a committee stage is, is basically like you know, raising the dead in this current situation. Uh, Hugh, you want to say something? Oh, well, I want to thank the, the three ladies, four ladies. You, you're fantastic. I mean, say, so I'm a man. I'm a single man. I haven't been in this situation, but it applies to me. It applies to me because I'm part of this society. 
And this society is being wrecked right now by murdering babies. And I certainly do appreciate the work that you you people have done in, in alerting us to, to, to this distraction of life. And I encourage you deeply, 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 as I said before to Jody, she she's the woman who's who's got me politically active, if you like along this one single uh, action. But, and, and, and that to me is, is hard, but she's great. So I, I encourage you, I bless you. I lift, I lift you guys up, the, um, Jody and Hannah, Michelle and the doctor, Joanne. Joanna. Uh, um, be, before the Lord, amen. Oh, look, looks like Liz wants to say something from Parks. Yeah, we both did. I, yeah, I do. I just want to say thank you to you, ladies. Sometimes you, you want to put in these submissions and you think, well, where do I start? I don't even know how to put that on paper, but what you've presented tonight, I'm even excited about getting in there and having a go at putting in a submission and, you know, getting getting behind you all. So thank you very much for all your effort you've put in. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. You said it just summed yeah. up quite well, I thought. He <laughs> did. Say to hide mum and dad, Michelle. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Debbie from Queen Deanne wants to say something. I um, basically, I just I say ditto to everything that's been said by the others, and I really mm -hmm. thank you, ladies. But Queen I was, it was especially enlightening to me to have you talk about the feelings being important. People of my generation, I guess, writing to Polly's would keep that out of it, you know, try and get facts and, you know, yeah. not that mm -hmm. feeling stuff. So that was very interesting and revelatory to me, the way you've told us to start things off. I must admit I cheated and put mine in via the golden scepter for this one, but for future things that I'll be doing on many other occasions. Um, it's helpful information to have. So thank you very much and for your commitment. Incredible. Just the record, if you have put one in, uh, don't feel like the Golden Scepter is a great way to do it. But with this one, we felt it was so critical to make sure that, uh, that, that it was totally your submission. It could never, ever be um, knocked back. And therefore, this is why we've gone to a lot of bother with this. But certainly the Golden Scepter, the, the main thing is we've got dozens of groups put in submissions. And some, like we've got two groups using a, very much using a, if you like, an electronic uh, sort of setup. But ultimately that, we haven't actually filled it in. We've made, we're forcing you to write your own words. And that's why it's so important to write your own story, your own words. And yes, your story and feelings are very, very important. Hilary. Hello. I just want to say such a big thank you, Warwick, everybody, really. I've been praying with George Christensen and Matt Canavan about this for a long time, and I feel very cheery. And I suddenly realised tonight it's Purim. It's the date where Esther had gone before the king. And do you remember that evil Haman was exposed? And that, could I just pray, Warwick, that the exposure of the evil behind this would happen? Absolutely. Happen. Please pray right now. And, Father, we thank you that in um, Esther 9.1, we're told that the tables turned. And all this work, Lord, that Warwick and everyone else in Canberra Declaration has been doing, writing these decrees for life. That's why we get on here. We're praying for life. We've agreed with a decree for life. And it's your life, Jesus. It's your life in these babies that you've created in your image and likeness. And we declare they shall live and they shall not live in pain and trauma. That, Lord, you would move so deeply in the hearts of the people of this nation that there would be a great conviction unto repentance and a realisation of the absolute barbaric cruelty. And that, Father God, there would be a divine shift just happened when Mordecai was re rising up with Esther, they made a new decree, Haman was exposed, and then the people of the different provinces actually helped the Jews stand up and fight. And that's what we're doing right now. And I just praise and thank you. This happened in a day. The tables were turned in a day. And I pray this is a day 
where this turning will happen in the realm of the spirit. And there will be a hungering and a thirsting for righteousness and people to desire to do the right thing. And if they're pregnant, they're going to want to have their babies. Lord, and there's going to be such a move of Christians around this nation to help people keep their babies and love them and know, learn how to nurture them. And that, Father, we could just see your hand move and you, Lord Jesus, be given all the glory. And we pray for your protection for Matt Canavan, Alex Antic, and all the different ones who've stood up with this one. And for all our precious sisters tonight, that no weapon forged against any one of them, or you, Warwick, or anyone involved in Jesus Christ's precious name, and that our names and addresses put on this thing, nobody would come to our houses or create any havoc or destruction. Lord, we ask that you will close the eyes of the watchers, You'd stop their ears, you gag their mouths, you turn their faces away, and there will be no retaliation, payback, or revenge, no accident, infirmity, calamity, confusion, or any other witchcraft to prevail. We praise and thank you for the power of your precious blood, and that, Father, we can be fearless standing for you because you will fight for us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Just to clarify something there. Um, uh, with Hillary's prayer, um, that your addresses aren't published. Okay, so you, 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 if you, if you say I want my submission to be private, you can. So if you say I want a submission to be private, you can. You got the rights to do that. But if you then put your submission out, they won't publish your name and address. As they'll publish your name, and they might put your state or you come from Sydney or something like that. But they won't be publishing your address. So there's no worries about Good. that. Okay, Good. that's. Uh, it's very, it's very important to realise that. Kate, you want to say something, Kate Keegan? Oh, you're muted, Kate. No, I was just lifting my hands and supporting Hillary's prayer, so sorry. <laughs> God bless you, that's great. Well, guys, um, yeah, look, it's, it's great to pray with you. It's a great honour to have you all on the call tonight. We had 165, I think, at one stage, um, which is pretty darn amazing. And the main thing now is to get as many submissions and someone again is, uh, you're asking about all the links and stuff. All those links and all this information will be in tomorrow's um, camera decoration. It'll, it'll be in your inbox by 12 o'clock midday. And there will be a recording of this particular night, which you can share with your friends and you can share it with other people, okay? So, um, you know, he'll have all that information in one place, all right? And you can go on, you know, get, get copy and paste and put stuff into your submission. And uh, we'll we'll do it that way. Molly, you can speak, but it has to be quick because we've got to finish. Yes, I'd like to share a testimony that my husband got to do in a small country town. A little baby was born. I don't know whether you can see this picture, but here she is. This was 28 weeks, and this was a um, birth that the mother was having the first time, and Thank God that uh, Winner was, was there and he was able to keep this baby alive for about nine hours till an RFDS plane came. And on his 50th birthday, this baby girl came and sat on his <laughs> lap. And today she's 18 years old. So I want to give God the glory that Amen. may the Lord bless and bring forth these little children and not leave them to die. So we proclaim life in Jesus' name. Amen. That's a beautiful, beautiful story to end with, Molly. And thank you for sharing that. And that's a very beautiful story. And I remember you telling us that story some time ago. And it's a very magnificent story. Great to see those pictures. So God bless you. Wednesday night, we'll be praying particularly for submissions. So please come along uh, to pray Wednesday night. And we will be doing a, a pr prayer, 24 sevens of prayer, uh, the week before the state election. Okay, so that's coming up. And I'm pretty sure it's the, I'll just give you the date just, to, just, to, just so you got it there. You can mark it off in your diary. It will be the 17th and 18th of March. So it's just under two weeks time. And just like we prayed for Victoria, we'll be praying for New South Wales and we're asking our brothers and sisters from all over Australia to pray for us. I'm in New South Wales. 
uh, Neil and Liz are in New South Wales, Ray and Lynn are in Sydney, um, Kayleen's in New South Wales, Leonie's in New South Wales, and we would really appreciate your prayers, wouldn't we, ladies and gentlemen? Eh? And so just as we prayed for Victoria in this most recent election, let's pray for a miracle in New South Wales. We've also got um, our dear brother Lyle standing in New South Wales, Lyle Shelton, as an independent in the upper house. And I would certainly encourage you to think strongly about putting him as number one. And again, it's up to you what you do with your vote. We will be having a Christian Values checklist come out uh, hopefully in the next week, next seven days, and that'll be our goal. But uh, God's blessings to you. Keep up the great work. And we're going to say goodbye and God bless you. And again, thank you, Hannah. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Jody. Thank you, Dr. Joanne Hale. We really appreciate it. God bless you.